Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the city of Amida, where in 360, the Persians laid siege to the Roman city for 73 days. One of our sources, Ammianus Marcellinus, was there and wrote about the siege in the first person. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and history. Now Marcellinus escaped the city. He bravely ran away through a side gate when the Persians were assaulting and managed to hike 10 miles or so until he found a horse and then he rode the rest of the way until finally he reconnected with the Roman troops. And we are trying to stave off attacks in the west by various barbarian groups. Mostly they're attacking the western Romans and we're just helping out. However, our relationship with the Huns, I believe, is deteriorating and the Persians, if not deteriorating, it will certainly get a little interesting when the current Persian king dies and is replaced by his much more aggressive and expansionist son. But right now, the good news is our Legion Three, the Parthian Legion, is done with being sick. And so now they are increasing their manpower, which is very, very good for me. Okay, these guys are up here. Right, they were guarding Salona, but it looks like in the last episode we were successful in freeing Salona. So now, I guess we'll move back into our own territory. Probably could have forced March there, but no real reason to. And Arcadius is out of movement points, but he gained a level. So let's see, what should Arcadius get? This would give him more melee defense, which is good. Replenishment is definitely good. Zeal is okay. He's not going to govern a province, so corruption's not that interesting. He does have some more cavalry now. So you know what? Let's go with more infantry, defense, and then cavalry, morale, and attack and defense. Very good. Oh, and faster movement speed. So this is general just cavalry everything. Unfortunately, we are eventually going to have to get Fleet Commander, even though I don't intend to really do much with the Navy, so that we can then get Vanguard, which helps us out quite a bit. Okay, and his forces are replenishing too. We're going back up to Sirmium. We have this group of rebels here, who is the remaining few units from our previous attack. We'll keep an eye on them. What does Rome require of me? And you delivered your units. You did what you were supposed to do. So now we'll have you sit in Constantinople. You are the guy who's good at hiring, right? Yes. All right. And we have some money. We're going to walk you around a little bit. Would that you were. Okay. What else is going on? People are unhappy in Macedonia, Dardania, well that's to be expected, Cappadocia, but that's because they are diseased, and Bithynia. Actually, Dardania should be... Oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, I get it, you're unhappy. Why do we have fields here? Is Dardania a fertile province? Wow, look at that. The islands in Egypt are still good, but everything else is slightly worse as the global climate changes. But Dardania is not really the best, no. Sanitation is okay. But we don't have any sanitation buildings. so Sertica will build waterworks. And I, could do, I could do horses. It's plus five battle speed for cavalry recruits, but I think that's only in this particular province. Do cattle, I suppose. Oh, 
All right, I'll do one cattle and one sheep. All right, that's fine. So, okay, so the Persians, after 73 days of siege, took the city of Amida. And as a result, Constantius II decided to march east to meet them. He asked Julian for half of his Gaulish troops. And frankly, Julian's troops did not want to go. Their families were in Gaul. They didn't want to march off to the east under some guy they didn't even really care about. And so, once again, they raised Julian up to Augustus and they proclaimed him as emperor. This time, however, Julian accepted. So we were back into civil war, which the late Roman Empire saw quite a bit of. Julian actually initiated it and got the first jump in by marching his troops down. He had a part of his army go into northern Italy, and he and the rest of his army went down into Illyricum. So, ooh, my power is both feared and coveted, which means that now I can have 10 armies, which doesn't really matter because I only have, I think, five maybe. More fleets, another governor, that's great, and more agents, even though I have not yet recruited any agents. And Melatine. Even with high sanitation, diseases just spread. So Julian basically marched his troops down around here where there was a mountain pass between Illyricum and Thrace. So roughly around here. And the only holdout was the city of Aquileia, which has been destroyed in this game. But there were forces loyal to Constantius here and Julian kind of just hung out while his army sieged this city. But then, Constantius, in his march to face Julian, died. And so he magnanimously decided that, well, he had killed everyone else. So he said Julian would be the next emperor. So without having to even fight one battle in the Civil War, Julian became the undisputed emperor of the entire Roman Empire, not just the East or the West. Okay, so our goal, if you'll recall, was to eventually get to here, where we can have better legios and, ooh, cataphractari. Yes, I like the sound of that. And then eventually here, where we can get the eastern armored legio. So should we get recruitment cost less for melee infantry? No, let's go with this, because it'll give us... Or it'll only take one turn, even though it costs us something, and it'll give us better cavalry stables, which we need. Perfect. So next turn, we should be able to upgrade to higher level cavalry. All right, so Arcadius. What am I going to do with you? Ah, let's go say hello to these rebels. He'll still gain men even in Western Roman territory, so it might as well be our territory. Sirmium is our territory, and maybe someday the rest of this will be as well. You are now in Alexandria, so we're going to actually get you ready. Let's give you four more spearmen. And we'll... Oh yeah, we're not going to walk you around because you're recruiting. Alright, you. I can't really afford to do much with you. We could recruit, but I'd rather save the money. I'm going to recruit down south, and we'll go with the armies we have here. So I'm just going to have you walk around. Alright, and you, sir, what are you going to do? Where are people unhappy with me? Macedonia? Yeah, so we're going to go talk to them about that. So we're trending down three approval points every turn. Sanitation here is pretty bad. So next, maybe next turn we'll upgrade our sanitation. Yeah, squalor is pretty bad because we're doing olives and marble columns. That's okay though. 
Taxes are the main issue that's upsetting them, and religious differences. Greco-Roman paganism is at 50% almost, and growing. Greek Christian, however, is also growing, as is Manichaeanism, so I'm not sure. It looks like Greco-Roman paganism is way more on the upswing. Why? I couldn't tell you. But we do have our church here. Well, the presence of the army should next turn start fixing that. Actually, we can name a new governor. So I think that's where I want to put them, is Macedonia. Right? Because this, I guess I could put one in Bithynia. Where do I have my governors? Yeah, Cappadocia is also a good place for one, I'd say. In Palestine, they could make us some money. Who do I have to utilize? This guy is just a statesman, a taskmaster, fearless warrior, champion rider. So none of you guys are really worth a damn. So you know what? Flavius Abontiatus, you're a statesman. We're going to send you over to Macedonia. All right, so hopefully he can help with the problems there. While we're on this screen, let's go ahead and look at our... Our guys here, we're in good control, 68%. Our dominion is alright, almost 40. And our power is balanced, which is lowering our tax rate, but it's not hurting us. Now, if we get to this next one, respectable, we start losing public order. Which we don't want. Okay, so let's look at our fellows here. You're our best guy. And really, all oh, you can't be master of foot? Really? All right, well, Master of Soldiers, I guess. Does anyone else here have four stars? No. Okay, well, I guess I can improve our governors by making the military counts. I could have sworn this guy would be ready to be... Acquired age 28. How old are you? 43. Hmm. So that's not it. Required rank 3. You're rank 4. Influence cost 27. I'm not entirely sure what the problem is here. Antonius Cato. Where's our Parthian guy? Probinus? I wish you were a higher rank. If I made you a military count, it would piss some people off. So let's go. Antonius Mus and Ibutantis. Alright, that's pretty solid. Rufinus is just sitting around. Still no children. Worst comes to worst, I may have to... Although he's only 22, I was going to say I may have to adopt this guy, but... I don't think it's a problem. You know, in the last episode, I found out that I had missed four of the six goals that were set for me. So let's take a look and see what those goals are. If I can... I'm not entirely sure where our goals are listed. Ah, objectives. Okay. So, we survived, yes. Oh, and oh, we're already in Chapter 2. So, here are six goals. Maintain a total of ten units of the following type. Palatina, Elite Palatina, or Protectoris Domestici. And we get a thousand gold for that. Okay. Those are kind of my least favorite units right now, so I don't know if I want to do that one. Maintain sovereignty over three puppet states. I could probably pull that one off. I have two. I just need one more. Research the following technology, military standardization. I have reached that. So I got a thousand for that, I guess. Yep. Cool. Maintain trade relations with three factions. We have five, so we're great there. Carry out two political actions. With the young, weak ruler Arcadius on the throne, the Eastern Empire was beset with plots and intrigue. Many people were attacked by bands of barbarians on their travels, or simply disappeared when they had outlived their usefulness. So I have to assassinate somebody. I might not do that. It takes a long time to train up a spy. 
And finally, maintain two priests. I could do that. They do cost a lot of money, however, to maintain. So really, I need to focus on earning some cash. All right, but those are my objectives. So everyone's been moved. Except for Parthian Legion. What does Rome require of me? Just to march back and forth between Edessa and Amida for the moment, sir. All right, good. I need to set a... What do you call it? A pronouncement or a... Edict. So this will improve research and public order, which we definitely could use. Yes, we'll do that one. Because Macedonia is not really... We're not going to recruit troops here. We're not really growing food here too much. So, the other ones aren't as useful. Okay, so what kind of emperor was Julian now that he is the emperor? Well, he went straight to Constantinople and he did a lot of things. He was a very busy man. Uh, Marcellina said he didn't sleep very much at all. These people trouble the emperor greatly. I respectfully ask that you do something. They trouble your emperor. There are no problem with, with me, the other emperor. Caledonians. And you'll pay me $2,000 to declare war on them. Sure. Or 2,000 solidus. Or solidi. Someone out there who's listening probably knows the plural of, of solidus. So, by all means, let me know in the comments. You have chosen... So, first of all, Julian greatly reduced the overall size and scope of the government. He thought that the huge bodyguards and palace officials and eunuchs and all kinds of ornaments that the previous emperors had that was started, remember, with Diocletian, since he wanted to make the emperor seem like a god or chosen by God, Julian said, eh, to all of that, and he got rid of all of that. He also cleaned up a ton of corruption that was plaguing the empire at that point. Again, Eutropius. He wants to, what does he want? Oh, this is me, actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll lower your influence. You too? All right, all good. So yeah, Julian restored paganism as the official religion of the Roman Empire. But that is not to say that he persecuted the Christians. He did not. He did not do anything to hurt the Christians. No one was killed. He did, however, reduce some of the benefits that Christians had under Constantine and Constantius. He reduced the stipends that were being paid from the state to the Christian bishops. And he made it so if there was a Christian school, that they couldn't use classical texts in their training. They could only use Christian text. Hispania has changed to Latin Christian. Yeah, that's to be expected. Probinus got fertile. That's great. Good for him. We got a bejeweled mincer, which gives good research rate faction-wide. And we have our better cavalry. And our edict. Okay, sweet. So now we have a gentleman here. We're still, however, losing some points, so we're going to improve the sanitation. And public order. Excellent. Ready for orders. And you can just sit in Thessalonica. Ready for battle. Eh, go for a quick little walk again. And back. All right, excellent. Nothing. You're going to sit there? Well, we are going to move you. Just to avoid you getting bad traits. Okay, you can go up here. Okay, and that leaves us with... This guy's actually starting to get a pretty decent army. These guys are our buddies. They're our client state. And then we have Axum down here. Who have a full stack army and a small army. 
We may want to go down after them first, because the Nobatians will help us. So we have some, plenty of spearmen. Let's get... Yes, a good and glorious life. And some peltists. Okay, that's for right now. We may get some mercenaries surrounded out. I don't know. Depends on how our money's looking. Food is still going strong, but the climate is changing. What I need to do right now in this turn is invest in some money-making opportunities. Actually, can we do the gold? I think we did do the gold, didn't we? So now we can do upgrade to the goldsmith, because you need gems for that. But we cannot... Oh, we can't afford it. Only just. Alia? We can't... Okay. Wealth from culture, I guess. I'd rather have wealth from industry. Wealth from commerce. Actually, isn't this... Doesn't this benefit commerce? No, I don't think so. I thought I had something that benefited commerce. Oh, here we go. The die maker. So really, we need commerce here. Adobe dryer? I think we're going to go with the pewter, weren't we? 900 from industry? Yeah. And more. we'll stay away from more food for the time being. Cilicia? Tanner? 600 wealth? And 5% from animal husbandry, which we could build a sheep flock. Or a quarry, which lowers construction cost. 600. Hmm, that is a good question. Well, we'll do the tanner, because I will build sheep in the next turn, I guess. Alright, so that leaves us with Arcadius. Let's kill some rebels. Oops. At your command. I will journey to the ends of the world for Rome. And we're going to auto resolve protective. Advance. So actually, Julian put forward an edict that said that all religions would be treated equally in the empire and no religion would be given precedence over any other. So he was very equal-minded. He didn't want to see Christianity become the official religion of the empire at the expense of paganism, but at the same time he didn't want to destroy Christianity. He even rebuilt or tried to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Oh, we're not researching. Hello. Well, that, of course. And then we'll almost be there. It's going to take forever, though. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 turns. We may want to go back to Civic. Actually, we may want to go to that now. I mean, that's a huge weight. It's a huge weight. Whereas in four turns, we can get higher growth. Cattle pens and stables. 3% wealth. 5% wealth. Okay, that one. That's what I'm going to do. It might be wrong, but that's my choice. And Julian understood that persecuting Christians wasn't going to win him any friends. It didn't work for previous emperors. But what he tried to do is minimize them by utilizing their strengths. That is the overarching hierarchy of the church where each city had its head bishop and such where paganism never really had that. So he tried to have a chief priest for each city to kind of mirror the Christian we have long structure. admired your powerful armies. Can you not commit their efforts to attack these people? Swabians? No, I'm not going to do that. You're not paying me. I trust you have thought what happens next. We will not be held accountable for your future. Excuse me, Nias Plinius Sola, whoever the hell you are. What happened to Honorius? I have to find out. You are falling apart. Your empire is falling apart, and mine is producing tons of wealth and troops, and we're actually 
fighting on your land right now, saving your people from the barbarians. So don't talk to us about our future, jackass. Julian attempted to create a religion or a pagan religious hierarchy similar to the one enjoyed by Christianity. But at the end of the day, the people of the Empire didn't really buy into what he was trying to do. They had seen too much Christian emperors and Christian nobles, and they had just saw that the wheel was turning in the direction of Christianity, and they were afraid. You know, if you were a pagan, you don't want to stand up and say, Yay, Julian, I support you, if the next emperor is going to be a Christian and your whole family is going to get exiled or killed. And so, Julian, frankly, didn't live long enough to see a resurgence of paganism in the Empire, and he was unsuccessful in that matter. Next turn, we will finish our discussion about Julian next turn and next episode, and we will see what's happening, maybe get in another battle, who knows. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.